Good morning and welcome to Dungeness Valley Lutheran Church. This is our worship offering for Sunday, May 3rd, the fourth Sunday of Easter. And it's also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. You'll see that motif throughout the worship. I'm Pastor Russ Britton. Glad you are joining us and pleased to have Mark on piano and Valerie singing with us today. And uh, we actually have uh, Andrea will be reading our lessons via virtual lecture. A few things to, to let you know. First and foremost, in these worship offerings, our bulletin can be found at the top of our website, dvelca.org, if you care to follow along and sing along. But otherwise, no, just to, to listen is welcome, as certainly as well. The May newsletter was mailed this week. At the back of that newsletter, it said that the directory was going to accompany it. And as a fact, we are still receiving updated information to our directories, so the directory will follow at a later date. Just to speak to some who might wonder the, the uh, governor's update extended through May 31st, some might note that phase one does allow drive-in religious services, as long as the same household is in the car. We do not yet have plans to do that, but stay tuned to, for pertinent information in your email newsletter. Two items of note, um, the flowers on this Good day are donated by Ted, or sponsored as it were, by Ted and Lanice Johnson in celebration of their first anniversary. And um, beautiful lilacs and daisies, we're grateful and celebrate with them. And then a little bit of sad news, but we commend it to the, the church. I heard word um, uh, for um, uh, Mar Marie Breitsprecher Johnson passed away on Friday evening. And uh, just to let the congregation know this um, message, Marie, my mother, was a member of DVLC for many years and sang in the choir until she was 90. She died Friday night at Martha and Mary Rehab, and we request prayer for her and the family. She was 94 years old, and she, well, the details, was, was spending time with her daughter and family in Port Townsend, and so services will take place 
um, in Port Townsend. But again, we, our hearts go to the family of Marie Breitsprecher Johnson. And uh, the last line of the article is, we thank her Dungeness Church family for 20 years of fellowship. So with your bulletin in front of you on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we now join in singing verses one, two, and four of our opening hymn, Have No Fear, Little Flock. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us read together our prayer of the day. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you've been standing, I invite you to be seated for our readings from Andra. The first reading this morning comes from the second chapter of Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon them, upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute them, distribute the proceeds to all as any had done. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The scriptures speak. Please join me in reading the second, the even number verses of the Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along bright pathways for your name's sake. Although I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare the table before me in the presence of enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cap is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading comes from the second chapter of First Peter. It is a credit to you, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? 
But if you endure when you are doing right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins to his body on the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live from righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going to astray like a sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The scriptures speak. Continue the reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus says, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought, all, brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will, find, will, go, will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. And now we'll hear our sermon from Pastor Russ. Thank you, Pastor Russ. You're welcome. This is one of my favorite passages. Life and life abundantly. Yes, please. But then, wait. What, there are adversaries to that? Oh, God, come on. I, but even Psalm 23 names that the shepherd has a rod and staff and must have had cause to use them at times. The, the corruptibility of human willingness to work surreptitiously and malevolently rather than towards life with mercy and regard and compassion and justice. Oh, that's difficult. We need a good shepherd. And our life experience is not monolithic. You can have a great day in the morning and then come the afternoon, get news that just wrestles you to the ground. And sometimes by evening be back to feeling all right or okay, or, or as the kids say these days, man. Now, like many gospel passages, there is a lot going on in here. The passage focuses on entry and exit, having a theme of access. And that theme plays out largely in the metaphor of a gate. One of my favorite professors used to say to our class when we had clearly missed something, that we looked like a herd of cows staring at a new gate. 
See, our, our ability to engage points of access, points of progress, points of health, is to recognize that it is something for us to go through. And I don't know about you, but I have not encountered talking doors or talking gates in my everyday life. I suppose good fantasy literature has something like that imaginatively. But the point is the things we go through and the ways we go through them have a lot, a lot to do with the voices we listen to and the stories we tell ourselves. This, friends, is both beautiful when it beckons us to the better angels of our nature and frighteningly perilous when voices stir rancor and bluster. That theme of voices, and particularly a shepherd's voice, should snag our attention like wool on a barbed wire and hearken us to listen. These days, there are voices that are trustworthy. These days, there are voices that are oleaginous and deceptive. These days, there are voices bombastically blustery. These days, there are voices still small, consoling, resolute. These days, there are, hold on, hold on, these days? There have always been those voices throughout time and history. Who do we choose to listen to? I mean, you might be having particular people come to mind with any or all of those references, and perhaps you're disconcerted that some people who you put in one group, another categorizes decidedly differently. But when we lean towards what we can or cannot control, we start to realize who do we choose to listen to. And that leads this pastor to think, wow, are we not still people in need of a good and worthy shepherd? Let me be clear, I am not alluding to any leader on our earthly pilgrimage. We need a Lord. We need a Savior. We need a good shepherd. In, Luther write, in Luther's writings, he writes, one who saves us from sin, death, and the devil. And in this gospel, from any thief in position of influence who would steal, kill, and destroy, literally or spiritually. When we are honest, sometimes we need a Savior from ourselves. And yes, sometimes from the connivings of others. We need a savior. We need a good shepherd. Who do you say Jesus is? I know this morning who Jesus says he is, but which voices do you let say who or what is worthy of your hope? Know this, there is a good shepherd. But will we listen? I mean, by God's grace, will we listen? And it is not if we listen, for we are listening. We can't help but listen. But given what and when you are listening to, are you being shepherded well? Given when and what you are listening to, are you living life abundantly? We will soon sing, shepherd me, O God. Do we live that request as well? Oh, I hope so. Now, today, you will move, and I hope literally you will get up and move for at least a few minutes. It's important to even walk around your house or wherever you're watching this from, but you will move. But I mean in the sense, I mean you will move towards a gate. You will move step by step. Which voice will you follow? One that makes you bitter or better step by step. It may mean tuning out other voices which steal, kill, destroy, step by step. And it may mean walking away from someone or something for someone or something better, step by step. I know this. Jesus did not give an invitation he did not mean. This did not become my favorite passage all at once, but step by step. It's life-giving, it's hopeful, and it calls us to follow better. Is what you are following bringing life? Is it bringing life at all? Is it bringing life abundantly? Where is a great gate? Let's get to stepping. Amen.
We join in singing, Shepherd Me, O God. Valerie will act as our leader and invite the congregation to technology, the congregation to join on the refrains. continues with our prayers. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, schools, anywhere where learning abounds. May we ever be grateful for the voices that call us to and through worthy gates. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands and hearts as they feed the world. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries that none of our neighbors may lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations 
to return your path to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Rejoicing God, you delight to delight us. Guard the hearts and spirits of those with reasons for joy. We remember this day, especially Karen, who welcomed her grandson, and Kathy, who welcomed great-grandson Max into the world this past week. For Ted and Lenise celebrating their first anniversary, and for Orlin, who is now finally home from rehab, still recovering, but good to be at home. And all those whose hearts were gladdened this week by something as simple as a kind word, an honest compliment, a gentle touch, or a smile. Lord, in your mercy. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We walk, or we pray, for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelming with suffering. We remember this day, especially Dennis, Ken, Anna, Carol, Pamela, Brandon, Neil, Kelly, Ruth, David, Bill, Henry, Orlin, Ginger, and those whom we mentioned from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Your Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. And we thank you for their lives of faithful witness, especially this day remembering Marie Brightsprecker Johnson. Lord, in your mercy. Your With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray in your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment to, to, to share the peace with whomever you're with. Hey, Valerie and Mark, peace be with you. At this time in our worship would be when we would customarily gather our tithes and offerings in response to God's generosity and in support of the mission and ministry of the congregation. And so as you are, hey, hey all right. There you go. You can mail it in or... We give thanks for that support and are pleased to say God continues to be faithful through you all and your acts of love in supporting this place. Now let us pray uh, the, as our Lord has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Can we lift our voices together in our sending hymn, singing verses 1, 3, and 4 of If You But Trust in God to Guide You. 1, 3, and 4.
Christ is risen, just as he said, go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. As the postlude plays, join me in recessing, and again a thanks to Valerie and Mark and Andra. Mm -hmm. 